You can definitely force yourself to improve or get in better shape or lose weight by hating yourself or through shame. However, you will rob yourself of the joy of feeling like you did it voluntarily. There's a very big difference. One feels forced. One feels like tyranny. The other one is joyful. I chose to do this. I did this because I wanted to. Guess which one leads to sustainable progress? Guess which one sticks around longer? If you're saying shame, you're wrong. It's the other one. So don't use shame to get results. This, uh, I was li I'm listening to a book right now called... Um, Justin's a big shame guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think... <laughs> shame on you for bringing that up. <laughs> now I feel shameful for that. Yeah. Uh, I'm reading a book called... Um, non-aggressive communication, I believe. Marshall, let me look it up because, and I've, I've, I've uh, shouted this book out, non-violent, sorry, non-violent communication by Marshall Rosenberg. And this gentleman is a psychotherapist and he talks about how we communicate to others and how we communicate to ourselves and how big of a difference it makes in understanding communication, being able to express your needs and the way that we, again, like how we tend to communicate to ourselves is the way that we're raised through society, which is you did that, you made that mistake. Therefore you're a bad person or therefore mm -hmm. you're a bad kid or a bad husband or a whatever. And, um, that idea, which we can apply to fitness, right? Like I, dang, I went off my diet. True. I'm such an idiot or I have no discipline or I'm so fat or I'm so unattractive or whatever that can definitely motivate you to make some changes. You can hate yourself to make some changes, but then you don't feel the the uplifting, freeing joy of I'm doing this because I want to. I really am doing this because I want to grow. It feels forced and human behavior shows us that when we do, when we do things because we're forced to do them, either we'll tyrannize ourselves in the ground or we rebel. Uh, we end up standing up to ourselves or to whatever the tyranny is. And that typically looks like a swing of the pendulum in the opposite direction. And this, we communicate many different ways on the podcast, but I loved the way he said it in the book. Do you think that's a natural progression that you have to go through though? I think like, do you think the average person or the majority of people could actually joy themselves to the gym? Or do you feel like you, part of the natural evolution is having shame because I'm not healthy, because I'm fat, because I'm lethargic, because I don't have energy, because I'm weak, because I have this disease, because the list goes well, on. Well, you just listed right? a bunch of facts. You didn't list anything that's shameful. So facts are I'm overweight, I have low energy. Yeah, but you can you heart can disease. you can feel shame because of all those facts. You can you right. can add, you can add to that and say so. So that's my point though, yeah. right? So so let's, it's like a signal. Those are all the facts, right? Um, but then I've, that leads I've, to I feel shameful and I go I go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Do you think the average person can get to a place of being able to reframe that and come from a place of joy and say, you know what, I'm going to go to the gym because I want to take care of myself? Or do you think it requires that 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 uh, that initial push of un being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. uh, maybe not even liking yourself, or uh, to, to go there first? So I know I don't think it's required. So being dis uh, uh, uncomfortable is different. So you can be uncomfortable. You could sit, you could be overweight. You could have, uh, oh no, I got heart attack or heart disease. That's different than I'm a bad person. Um, that's different than a judgment on that. It's just like, if your kid, like you got a two year old yeah. and your kid, uh, you know, does something they're not supposed to, but they're two and they don't know any better. Yeah. You're not like, man, what a terrible person. You're like, oh, they're two. Like, okay, but let's correct that behavior. Now, the reason why I say, uh, because this book makes the case that because we're raised this way and yes. it's so normal. We're conditioned to, rewire. Yes. to think that way. Yes. That's what, that was going to be my contribution was really, I'm sure it's like a matter of your environment or like the way that you've thought of yourself growing up and have been reinforced by, um, you know, your parents or peers or whoever else that you've allowed to kind of, um, feed into how you view yourself or how you make decisions. And so I, I would hope that people could approach it with through the joy method and to, to really look at it as like an opportunity uh, to, to grow and to uh, enjoy the, the process of it. But I think the, the majority of people probably go through the pain of it totally. first, like myself, where you're just like, Oh man, 
like I like so hard on myself, but again, was, I found success in that, in that I was like always overcoming something. There was always something wrong with me. I need to fix. I like, and I was kept driving that, that thought uh, forward until it just, it was so toxic. And to, to then have to kind of recondition myself to think differently about it took a lot of time. It will, it kind of reminds me of that, that paradox that I brought up uh, the other day in the podcast, right? Where it's like, if you're not uncomfortable enough, you get stuck in this place. Sure. That's why I think sometimes it'd be really yeah. difficult to come from a place. Like if, if all is well and you have got great self-awareness and, and you're, you have good balance in your life, mm -hmm. one thing with that, like, do you have the motivation? to, hey, I'm going to go also add this workout routine and, you know, diet plan because it would be, it was going to serve me and, and coming from play. Or does it require me to have a little bit of this like shame or or whatever to, to motivate you to get out of that position? Well, so if you look at like some of the diff most difficult segments of the population, we're talking about behavior change. I think one of the most challenging would be uh, addicts, right? People who um, become addicted to a substance so, so, so much so that it really disrupts their life. And if you look at the methods that have the highest success records, which all of them don't have a great success record, but the ones with the highest success record tend to have a component that either religious or some component where there's a lot of grace given to one's self. And they, they, that's why they say that they're, it's, it's, they're more successful because a lot of drug addicts or alcoholics, they feel shitty about themselves. Mm -hmm. They know my, I lost my family or I, man, I'm putting people, I lost my job and I feel terrible, but it doesn't work as a way to sustainably get yourself out of this, this, this rut. But then they have these methods, uh, like AA, one of the most you know, known, right? The whole There's a religious. The whole 12 step thing is based off of right. Yeah. And why is that? Right. Yeah. Part of it is the, the grace that you, that they believe in, that they receive allows them to look at themselves like this. I'm doing this thing that I need to correct. That's true, but it's different than I'm doing this thing that I need to correct. Therefore I'm an evil, terrible, stupid, shitty, whatever person, that element, when we apply that to ourselves in fitness in our space, well, you know, this is how many clients you train where like, oh my God, I went off my diet. I'm such an idiot. You know, right away, like I got to go into damage control because yeah. this person is now we're teetering on uh, the fence of we're not going to be successful. And then think of the clients right. you had the most success with. Yeah. The clients you had the most success with transition from that into like a, man, I really enjoy this. I like taking care of myself. This is a great thing. And oh, wow, I made that mistake. Let me let me learn and grow from that. It's a totally different. Yeah, uh, I'm trying approach. to. I'm trying to recall if I if I can remember anybody who um, who came. I think with the the right mindset. I feel like that was a big part of my job was teaching them that teaching yeah. them how to <laughs> totally reframe, reframe. And I mean, we talk about this all the time, right? Like it's just so important that even if somebody comes in and they're like, "I need to lose thirty pounds." You know, initially, you know, I agree and, and sign them up, and we get moving. But then ultimately, I have to move them away from kind of that goal, right? And to focus on all the other things that, you know, exercise and, and choosing to make, get better sleep and make better food choices, how much that applies to other aspects of your life than just the scale, right? Otherwise, you know, that'll be a temporary fix and then they'll eventually go back. It's interesting too, because um, one of the ways that I, I started to figure this out for myself, and there were, this wasn't even, the, this was not the end of it. There was a long road after this, was having kids because I could easily apply that to my kids and, and not, uh, feel like they were bad. In other words, if my kid made a mistake, I could look at them and be like, Oh, they made a mistake. Yeah. I know they're trying you had way more empathy. They're, for them, yeah, yeah, exactly. They're not a bad person. Like they, they, they're trying and okay, I'm going to help them. I'm going to help them correct this behavior. Yeah, when it comes to yourself, it's different. Oh man. When it came to me, there was no grace. There was nothing like you could make the same mistake I made. I give you grace and me, I'm an idiot. I'm a, I'm a dumbass, and you better stop that and whatever. Um, and that doesn't lead to, even if it does lead to growth, the growth doesn't feel great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It feels like crap. Don't, do, don't time. you find one of the hardest things to reconcile though with that is like, it, it, it also tends to, to feed into like a superpower or somebody, you know, like you're, you're internally tortured because of this, or you're so hard on yourself. So you mm -hmm. push yourself to elevate to a certain level. So it's like, there's always this, this internal conflict of, this is not the health. This is not a healthy way for me to treat myself. This is not ideal. I need to evolve beyond this. Yeah. Yet simultaneously, it served me so for so long. You know I, I think I, about that a lot. I, yeah. I, I wonder if it's two things. I think either one, 
am I doing well in spite of that? Yes, that's what I, I think it's more just like we, we notice when people are so fixated on a goal that they don't listen to their body through the entire process. They just have their horse blinders on and they're so fixated on getting there. And it was like, you know, fueling uh, the fact that they could be so focused on this in spite of like, I really have, um, I want to, I want to be able to hang out with my friends and like, you know, relax and drink a little bit or like, you know, make, make some, some flexibility. There's no room for flexibility. I have to get there. And it's like, you know, you, you can only run that way so long. Yeah. And I wonder if, if, if we can, some of us succeed in spite of that. So not that it's a superpower, but rather it's like, uh, you know, Hey, look at that car, that, that Ferrari. It's really fast. It's got to be because it has 10 bricks in the trunk. It's like, actually, if you take the bricks out, it'll go even faster. So maybe in spite of, or the second one is, I think sometimes we look at extreme pursuit, like uh, achievements and we, we identify that as success, but maybe it's, maybe it's not necessarily success. Maybe it's torture, you know, like the guy that's like super hyper productive. We're like, wow, you know, I got to be more like that. But then if you were actually in the shoes, yeah, like, I mean, oh I, my God, I, I don't want to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I subscribe to that more yeah. than anything else. Cause I think it is a superpower, but what you're, what you don't see is the complete picture. Yeah. You don't see the also torture. the torture and, uh, the consistent, uh, you know, desire for more and never being content or happy. And so, right. but uh, you know, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think about this a lot and, and wrestle with that, that feeling of, recognizing certain insecurities and weaknesses as things that you've learned to turn into these superpowers and strengths, mm -hmm. but then also seeing the, um, the, the other side of it, right. The other, the side of it, that's bad. It's like, so how do I pull from that energy or how do I pull from that, that superpower to propel me in life, but then not become so addicted or drawn to it that it controls or makes all my, well, you know, what's weird about mm -hmm. that is, uh, like, let's say somebody's struggling with that and let's say they're hyper successful at work. Right. So they earn a lot of money. They're very successful. And then they've identified like, man, my life is out of balance. I'm driving myself to this, this definition of success through my insecurities. And then they have this struggle. If I fix that, do I want to let go of this thing that I think is, is good, which is the success? What's going to happen if I, if I change this, will I make less money? Um, but the question is maybe it should be posed differently is will you be happier? might be the question. And I think some of us are afraid of letting go of the thing that we're so, you know, we're, we're, we're grabbing onto so tightly, mm -hmm. you know, I know I'm like that with fitness where it's like, I was yeah, just I could use more balance, I was but just gonna, I'm not going to look like, I it, was just going to ask you that and challenge you in that direction. Because when you look at our space, um, including ourselves, like, you know, and I brought this up the other day about like, you know, the, the place that I'm at in my journey of health and fitness is like, you know, exercise and lifting weights is to optimize the rest of my life. Is that really what you think it is for most people in fitness? Like, I don't think so. Not in our space. No, way. no, I think, I think we still highlight and glorify the extremes and, you know, like I struggle, I, I still struggle with that. Like my struggle now is, um, like I know, will it reduce, I don't know, aesthetics and performance to get happier? And if the answer is yes, then the answer should be, oh, well, I want to be happier. But there's something, there's a part of me that still clings to that other side. Yeah. Very strange. Right. It's a weird um, part of human behavior. So it's some, some self-reflection as well. But of course, it's easier for me to talk about it. Um, there, I mean, there's, reflect. well, I like, get back to my point again is, I mean, there's also this it, the strength of it, right? Like uh, how often when you go places, do you get complimented on how amazing you look for your age and like how impressive you are? Like, so, I mean, that feels good and that's, it's, it's fed into, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a positive thing. You are part of running a fitness company. And so, you know, looking this, like you had this exemplary uh, uh, physique and, and strong and like, it's like, so those things all play a positive thing. But when you really look at it in the whole yeah. sphere of health, like, is it a worthwhile trade? Yeah. Is it really a worthwhile trade and would actually look more like a two time or three time a week at yeah. most lifting weights? And would most of it actually be more mobility focused? And, you know, like, right. I mean, right. So I, I, again, I, this is something I wrestle with. I, I think about a lot. I think everybody is, wrestles with this, with some aspect of their life, you know? And mm -hmm. I think it's just the way, it's, it's, uh, look how we raise our kids. I mean, it's it, it, like the shame is baked into getting your kid to behave a particular way. And once you're raised that way, your internal, the way you talk to yourself is based off this. You got to change how you talk to yourself. You know how hard that is? Yeah. You ever mm -hmm. think about how you talk to yourself? 
you, it's uh, so much of it is not conscious that when you actually think about it, you're like, oh my God, I do say. The good thing is that I, I think now, like I, I don't judge me individually. I judge us as like Voltron. So where, <laughs> where you're overcompensating, you're making up for maybe we're just, Oh, I love this. Yeah, so, we're like a mutual fund. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so one stock. So, there, yeah, yeah. yeah. So technically we're, doing all right. so technically we're okay. So it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. I feel so good. Now, dude. <laughs> Since we were like one, you know I love that. Yeah, yeah. We got one shredded, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. body part in there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. When I go, you know, I should probably do more this way. Like, well, actually Sal does a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just a a lot of that. So we'll be the big meaty fat arm. Hey, so <laughs> stupid. Today's giveaway is Maps Powerlift. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. Also, this month's program sale, Maps Anabolic, half off. And Maps Anabolic Advanced, also half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Hey, speaking of yeah. muscles and stuff, that yeah. picture I sent you guys of my daughter, why does my one-year-old have bigger calves than me? Oh, yeah. my God, dude. Yeah. What the? They do that. Both, hey, both of them have unbelievable genetics. They got my wife. My wife's got crazy genetics. It's going to be really interesting. I can't wait I to I want to see, see what's going to happen like, I know. grow I, up. Are, are, are they going to be athletes? Are they going to be into bodybuilding? Like, I'm so interested in- But yeah, my wife sends me a picture. She's mail carrier. My daughter, <laughs> my, my daughter, she- she climbs everything, which is also my wife. I, apparently, my wife was little. Um, if her mom left her alone for five minutes, she would climb the cupboards. I mean, get into dangerous spots. My daughter's got this. Like, she's fearless with climbing things. My son's more like me, a little bit more cautious. But she climbs it. So Jessica's, like, you know, filming her trying to climb. We have a water table, which I don't know if, if, if parents yeah. – these are really fun, right? Yeah, they're film awesome. the water Kids and, love those. Oh, they love yeah, them. Yeah. Go outside and just have a blast. So she, she was building one, had it in the house. And there goes my one-year-old to try to climb it. And so she took pictures to send me. But what I noticed is calves, hamstrings. I'm like, what the hell is going on? It's crazy, This dude. baby's genetics uh, are great. Yeah. No, no uh, I can't wait to see what they they both end up being like and what they're into, you know? Yeah, totally. Speaking of kids, um, have are you guys using the Organifi products for kids, the green? Katrina is. Yeah, yeah. She's, so, so Max likes it. Yeah, yeah. No, he's like he's he's been using it for a while now. So she's pretty. How does he do it? Do, how do you do it? Just I'm put it in a sippy that. cup. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a it's a powder form. So she do that, or she'll mix it in with stuff like mix it in with like we we make him oatmeal a lot. So I've seen her mix. Oh, it so in. you just add it. Yeah, yeah. So I've seen her mix oh. it into food. I've seen her. I've seen her make it to where he drinks it. But as far as products uh, that are with our partners and stuff like that, he, he uses the Haya and the Organifi probably the most consistent, like Max does. Uh, mm -hmm. That's probably the most consistent thing that she's- It tastes good. Mm -hmm. It tastes, I tried it. it yeah, like he, he, he likes it. Yeah. We tend to dilute it like, uh, cause he does like it like more like she'll, she'll if she's having him drink it in his water, she'll dilute it down and over over the course of the day, he'll end up taking it I think it it's a great product cause it's, um, I mean, a lot of kids don't like vegetables. And so they're going to get the greens um, in something like that, and it's organic and yeah, minimally yeah. processed. So yeah, I wonder how they're how it's doing for them. I, I, I it's interesting. Like the ingredients adherence, are, adherence so for the, adults is already hard enough. Yeah, the kids. Is it more like? Does it taste more like apple? Is that uh, yeah? Because my kids already liked the other one that the, they the had. traditional yeah, green the juice. Traditional yeah. one. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's got it's got a milder, sweeter flavor, which I think appeals to uh, kids okay. a little bit more. Yeah. So it has carrots, spinach, moringa, beets, coconut water, lemon juice. Uh, acacia fiber. Uh, yep, that's it right there. So speaking of lemons, I, I made homemade lemon uh, lemonade the other day. You guys ever make lemonade? Homemade lemonade? <laughs> I haven't in a long time. Do you guys know how much sugar goes into homemade lemonade? Dude, it's, yeah. it's appalling how much sugar you have to add to, to your face not do this. Bro, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's <laughs> yeah. mostly sugar. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Gnarly. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, aren't all those juices like that? I yes. mean, everything. I mean, apple juice. <laughs> and I mean, all of them have to have a ton of sugar to make them like, like a that. a whole bag that, to finally make it. I mean, that, that has to be one of the, the worst things we did to to children was introduce Make them. juice yeah. like a yeah. staple well, healthy food. Juice yeah. is healthy. And yeah, think make yeah. parents think that apple juice and all these juices that we give kids are a good idea. A it's friend like, of mine, you know, when their kid was little- uh, their baby teeth got tons of cavities it's, it's, because they were in their sippy cup. With what's all so apple funny juice. is if you saw a parent, okay, if you saw a parent walk over to their little two year old toddler and crack open a Coca Cola and pour it into their yeah. thing, you would fr like, yeah, what the yeah, fuck? Like, but ah. it ain't that far off. No. What the, what's in the sugar content that's in like apple kids' apple juice is not that far no. off from a half a can of, of, of Coca Cola. So no. it's like, yeah. And, but yet they've been marketed to like, oh, this is for the way they get their fruit. Mm -hmm. This is healthy. It's like, nah. It's not. a little bit better, I think, these days. When we were kids, 
I think did it was you, like widely accepted. Like this is what kids drink. Did you see that I, I gave Max a donut? Did you see that? And, and no, I saw Mexico? that. Yeah, story, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I show. I wanted to make sure I showed the because of course everybody was like, "Oh my God, you gave him a donut." This and that. I said, "Yeah, he's now at that. This is he's at an age now. You try different things. Where I totally and what I love about it, and he I showed just, him. Like, the, took a bite. And was like, bro, handed it to you. That's it, yeah. dude. That's it. He took a bite and gave it back to you. Yes. Took a bite and then I and, and then I, I showed a video the next day of the donut. Not even half of it was uh, was ate, and I ate I ate the bigger bite out of us. Like, and it was literally that easy too. We bought it, we sat there together. He took a bite, I took a bite. I said one more. He took like a double bite, gave it, handed it back to me. Never asked, Done. It, never yeah. asked about it again. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Sat up in our in our hotel room where he could see it and everything like that. No, and, and that and I I, I did want to do that. That's part of why I did it was I wanted to show the audience because this is this is the relationship he has now with that. He's definitely had cake he's had ice cream he's had everything like I've, I've introduced sweets to him now but because i feel like we waited so long and that we can have communication because we share when we do it the habits that he has around is incredible do it's you, like do you know what just reminded me do you know what they give infants when they're trying to get do like a uh draw blood to prevent them from like crying or feel pain they sugar. give them like a sugary um like liquid yeah all oh, right right, right. Uh, and, and it makes the baby not cry yeah mm -hmm. what yeah, mm -hmm. you telling me that you know you try and tell me that there isn't some <laughs> like yes. some serious effects, some chemical. Yeah, what? It's I, dopamine. Hit. I remember because they my my my, my three year old they were taking blood and they gave it to him and I'm like whoa whoa, whoa what are you giving him I thought they were giving him some kind of medicine yeah oh it's nothing there's it's just sugar water and then I'm like whoa what has that effect yeah that's crazy uh, unbelievable dude but it's cool it's very cool to see because of course when I was going through that I had the extreme. People on the other side going like, "Oh my God, your kid's gonna rebel and he's gonna eat all this candy." It's gonna be no, like, "No, because you didn't make it a thing." Yeah, exactly. It just wasn't there. I was like, "It was like all I did was wait until the goddamn kid could talk, right? Until till he he could have a conversation about it." Like I didn't introduce it to him because he didn't need to know what it was yet. Yeah. And then when it got to that age where other kids were having it and he's around it and he can understand mm -hmm. what it is, it's like, and and then now he has this relationship where he can take a bite of something and then that's walk great. away from it. That's it's freaking did, awesome. Did dude. you guys see uh, Planet Fitness and their stock and everything that's happening right now? The mass. Uh, Did mass, you hear about this, Justin? I, over the transgender Adam thing, was right? was just yeah, telling me. I don't know any of the details. I'm gonna pull. I'll pull it up right now. So, so. someone took a photo. <laughs> Wait, was, okay, go ahead. It's. I mean, it's. It's almost. It's almost crazy. It's. It, no, it is crazy. So a woman took a photo of a a man shaving um, in the women's locker room. This man identifies as a woman, and she posted like shaving it. his face. Uh, I believe so. Oh, I think wow. it was his face or something, his armpits maybe. Yeah, I don't think it was his face. I think it was somewhere else. Look up oh, the okay. picture, Doug, because I want to get this accurate. Anyway, um, and, you know, identifies as a woman. So he's doing, and she took a picture, complained. Planet Fitness revoked her membership. Canceled her membership. Her membership. For taking the photo. For, for, for taking the photo. Yeah. The stock is down seven, oh, wow. almost 7%. And they have mass. Uh, now, the reason why she took a picture was because at the same time, there was a 10 year old girl inside the bathroom. Oh, is that really it? Yeah. So that was the point wow. of the, the lady came and complained and said, there's a man in the woman's bathroom and there's a 10 year old child in here at the same time. Like, and, and obviously got in trouble for taking the photo, which, okay, I get that, right? Because you shouldn't have take photographs in any restroom. So sure. But I also understand what she, she probably was using it for proof, right? Yeah. Like, so yeah. that's the, that. Okay. okay. He was shaving his face. His face. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 And Oh man, this, it's an interesting, interesting time on what, you know, what's going on. I don't know how I feel. Well, I do. Well, know how I feel well about it. yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay. I don't know that I care to comment how I feel. <laughs> uh, well, okay. So yeah, but here's, here's, and now it's a private company. Do what you they, want. Yeah. They're gonna. It's they're gonna up to them how they. They're gonna see it. how the market reacts. So it's a private company. You can do. You can. Yeah, I always. So when I see stuff like this, I'm always curious about like like how it really unfolded. How did the how did the business really handle it in person? Because obviously headlines are always designed to evoke, sensational. Yeah. yeah, to evoke some sort of emotion yeah. from the right or the left, and like right. get, we're up in arms. And you take a side. Oh, I defend the lady. Oh, I defend the the guy who identifies as a lady. Like oh, then we're gonna turn in this big fight. It's like right. You know, because uh, here's if I if I'm if it's your gym, okay. Mm -hmm. One, it's it's a big no no to take a photo of anybody. I don't care that's what true. You, what you identify as, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's so I, I'm probably going to reprimand the lady for that. The lady for that period, yeah. like I didn't need a photo of him shaving in there, like yeah. for you to because you could probably tell me that and I could probably figure that out, right. like you know who it is, yeah, or give you could, them a heads up, or you could point so them out. In, yeah, yeah, you could point out. You could say, the hey, there's it. somebody in there, and, right? You know. 
So, and then at that point, if it's my my gym, then I'm having a conversation uh, with the man who identifies as woman and say, and like letting him know on what I want done in my facility, like whatever that may be. Like, and I don't know where, uh, I don't know what public setting where I would be comfortable with someone who identifies as a woman going into the woman's in a woman's bathroom where pub, where it's public and children could potentially be in there. I think if that's possible, I yeah. think there's no that's way a I'm big, a, bigger discussion. Yeah, I don't That's I don't, a, that's a, that's a that's definitely a big discussion. Now it's a private company, they can do what they want. So I'll support Planet Fitness in their decision, but the market will respond the way the market's going to respond. It looks like they're getting hit. Yeah. Where I draw the line, and I've said this. Before, well, yeah. I mean, what would you? Okay, so, I draw the line with sports. That's where I draw the line. Um, now, with with private locker rooms and bathrooms. Well, okay, that's that's does up that to you. need to be disclosed? It's not private though. You it's know, a public like, bathroom. I mean, at, 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 Planet of how, Fitness. Yeah, it's no, you have to be a member. Well, okay, a member of the facility, but I mean, any a, any age group can go in there. So if they're a member, I, so I, you, it could. It's if it's your um, if it's your facility and you own it then theoretically you can make, as long as you don't break a law, then it's your policy. Now a public bathroom owned by the government, now we can have a discussion because this now involves us voting or, you know, whatever the case may be. No. But sports is where I draw the line because that's mm. very clear. That's obvious to me. Like I mean, I, I draw the line where a, a young child can be in there. That's where I would draw the line. Like until mm -hmm. you got female parts, yeah. And and you look and the and the and the eight year old kid is not going to be able to tell the difference. I mean, as a father, I agree. Fuck with you. Yeah. yeah, I'm not I okay with I don't it. Know if, if it's I, my facility, that's how that's how it goes oh, down. I, till yes, then. yes. If I own the gym, down. yes, that's, so, that would be yeah. my. And I think that's well, I think that's the uproar that's, that you're that's getting. probably the response. And but again, to that that's in the structure of the company and how they like outline that they have to just be transparent. If this is the case, this is how you know. Uh, Basically, that that person is going to be in the locker room, and so now people coming in with a kid that's touring the gym have to know that this is how. Yes, this is a possibility that somebody identifies as a woman that's a man is in there doing their thing, and that could be a potential. And you can decide variable, to and you decide and to you join decide or not. for yourself. Yeah. So what makes me annoyed is when people don't understand um, that. So because you also get on the other side, you remember years ago that that uh, trans women suing. Um, I forgot what it was. It was like a waxing uh, place for not uh, waxing their, their genitalia because they're like vagina. Even though yeah, <laughs> no, we work on vaginas, not not, you know, not, not, not vagina. Testicles. They sued them. Now they lost, mm -hmm. but this whole like you know, private organization should be able to say yes or no. Yeah, it, it'll go somewhere else. That's that's the point. That's the as long yeah, as you're not breaking a law. Discrepancy. Or, yeah, yeah. Totally. I, I wonder. So <laughs> we bought stock in Planet Fitness. <laughs> <laughs> we sold it, right? Not my best. Not my best recommendation. <laughs> I think right there. How's the How's the ticker doing, Doug? It went down. It went down. Uh, uh, do we have any money oh, no. left? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did we sell it? We must have sold yeah, it. I, mean, I hope this, we did. I think we might have it. Let yeah. me look. Oh, I think oh, we have Lord. it. I'm pretty sure we still have it. Wow. I don't think we sold that. Well, hey, speaking of stock and stuff, you brought up Weight Watchers and Oprah. Yeah, she came out. So she did. And so what, so she's legit. Okay, so she she had a special on last night, and I thought it was interesting because I saw all the and I shared with you guys um, all like the, the the promo leading up to it, and it just was like she so she's setting the table like how you know her, she her mind has been completely changed around obesity as a disease in the past. She didn't believe that way. It's been it's been explained to her now. And there, it, there's absolutely a, a very specific gene that puts you at a different position and mm -hmm. that obesity is a disease and these drugs are potentially what is going to save all these people. And so she has set the table like that. I find it really interesting that she pulled out of Weight Watchers yeah. so, and donated her money so there would be no sort of controversy. My prediction, because her little special that she had seemed like a giant promo for, yes. you know, G the GLP-1s. She's going to be promoting GLP-1s. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And so I think she pulled herself from Weight Watchers. I think what, she saw- Which it. partnership does she have with the uh, pharmaceutical That's companies. what I'm waiting yeah. for, right? I'm waiting for a big deal with Pfizer or yeah. start up her own company yeah. or something along those lines. That's my prediction. And by the way, I bought more shares on Weight Watchers again because it, it's still down. It's down even more than what it was before. So it went from four to three to like two fifty right now. And I I bought again because I think that that's I think she saw the writing on the wall with what they are doing. And, he, and she's going to try and compete. That's yeah. What I think. And by think? the way, I want to do a public service announcement right what? now. Uh, any stock picks that we mentioned on the show 
I'm not going to necessarily recommend <laughs> because right now our Weight Watchers is down 43%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And our well, Planet Fitness is down 39%. So <laughs> I don't recommend well, it. Well, I'm pretty sure I say the, that every time I say it. <laughs> you could do the opposite of what Adam says. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> you could have shorted those stocks. I know. It's, uh, I, um, you know, I I hate labeling. First off, what's the idea or goal behind labeling something a disease versus like alcoholism? It's a disease versus you know you're you're addicted and you have this issue. Challenge. By the what's, way, what's she the by the way she used that as a. I know she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you there's a gene. What, okay, that's not a guarantee. First of all, that's not how yeah. those work. But no. why label something a disease? What's the difference? Is there a difference in how insurance covers the cost? I think so. And I yeah, think that so may be the motivation. Kind of leans more in the medical condition. Yes. Side. Because if you can make obesity a disease, yes. then you can now insurance companies- now the treatments can, are covered. Yeah. Are covering it. Well, right? 100%. Uh -huh. yeah. You had 100%, yeah. dude. That's the whole- Because otherwise, what's the difference? If yeah. okay, Oh, I'm obese, uh, but it's a disease versus it's not. Okay. In order to not be obese, the same things apply. You still have yeah. to do the same, same rules stuff. apply. Yeah. yeah. And these GLP-1s are legit. I mean, they are effective, but you still have to yeah. do behavior modifications. You have to and for it to stick. You get you get to yeah. change. Yeah, and, and there's, <laughs> it's not habits. it's not a miracle a cure. It's just one of the most effective medical interventions that that we've seen. Do you want to buy some more Planet Fitness, Doug? <laughs> I don't think so. You know, no. <laughs> I mean, technically, this is when you're supposed to buy well, again. You got to. Double where, down right where's now. Where's Bud Light at these days? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're back. Uh, they're back, man. Are, I mean, are they, they? Are they? Are aren't yeah, they? Yeah, and they got uh, Shane Gillis is like one of their main oh, uh, yeah. spokesperson per now, which I think is brilliant. On oh, their he's end. so great. I saw. I don't know. I think that in UFC is obviously a big partner of them now. Yeah. So you see this big, <laughs> complete steering uh, direction. The yeah. opposite. That's, I mean, I, the, I said that originally. The power though, of the market, I said dude. that they would come back. I mean, I've too big of a monster for like, a, a, like of this, it was a blip on the radar. Like, it'll be interesting to see when uh, 24 months have gone by, if it was a wash or a net positive for them. Yeah. Mm. You know? Mm. Yeah. Just a really smart company can turn it into a positive. Yes. Yes. Everybody likes a comeback story. Yeah. A yeah. hundred percent. So, you know, speaking of Pfizer, did you, okay. So I got some interesting stuff on Pfizer. So did you see that they released, uh. So first off, remember Pfizer at one point with the CDC, they said, we're going to release the data on the potential side effects or effects of the COVID vaccines. And we'll do it in 75 years. You guys remember that? Mm -hmm. They tried to make it so that it would get released in 75 years. Yeah. yeah. People came back and said, no, <laughs> they pushed it. They forced it. They did Freedom of Information Act. Well, they just released the paper on myocarditis after COVID vaccination. You ready for this? It's 148 mm. pages. Oh my you God. ready for this? Mm. Yeah, let's Every single word in that report was redacted. So you're a congressperson, you're going to get a report and it's going to be a bunch of black lines. Just black lines through it? Yes. How? How's, like... What's the point? What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Why? What is the point? I don't know. Not, nothing. They released nothing. That's what they did. That's crazy. That's crazy. Isn't that insane? In <laughs> uh, speechless. I, I, I am speechless. It's like, it's like one of those things. It, it just, um, it, it just baffles me. To, yeah. to 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 the nth degree as far as people like readily being on board with um a lot of the information that we've been fed and then you come back and you see all the way they're handling uh all of this evidence and and just even just interest and, and intrigue like hey you know what what actually uh, occurred from the vaccines like are people thriving from them is anybody like uh you know, has there been any symptoms we should know I mean, about? I mean, are you guys really surprised? It, it, no. Are you surprised? Not. No. It's just like yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm about as surprised as I am about Dan Bilzerian coming out and saying he, monogamy is the way to go. Uh, yeah, did you see that? <laughs> Dan Bilzerian. How was that for a surprise? Dan, uh, did you wow. see that coming? I hope you know what. So Dan Bilzerian, people don't know, right? Dan Bilzerian, he's like he was like the modern Hugh Hefner, you know, maybe crazier. The stats he, the numbers he was touting, yeah. Is he said yeah. on a normal day he's yeah. having sex with three, two to three women on a normal day different women every yeah day. every day a lot of times five to seven the most was nine and he day. seemed a bit healthier than Hugh Hefner you know in terms <laughs> of like <laughs> well, he's got all the stem well, he's got all the stem cells and he's got more thrust <laughs> and, I don't know yeah, yeah. well so he, and so he was like yeah. the modern Hugh Hefner right like rich dude travel party hot chicks or whatever you see this on social media. And now he's coming out and he's like, no, nah, man, that's not the way, dude. He's like, I think monogamy. Yeah. Is it? Now, are young men going to hear him? I only need a thousand times to figure it out. Yeah. You know right. what's funny? 
the people, here's what's interesting. The people who will give you, like there's people who've achieved incredible wealth who will come back and say, it's not what makes you happy. Or there's people that achieve certain amounts of success. They'll come back and be like, listen, I'm telling you, I've been there. Happiness wasn't there. Here's Dan Bilzerian, money, yeah. all the women, all the partying and drugs. He comes back and he says, no, nah, listen, this is not. I mean, at least he comes out and says it, right? I appreciate that. I appreciate the people that, because there's obviously a lot of people that still put on the facade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretend or continue to try and fill the hole with like all these other things and and fake it. Like, I won't like say it. <laughs> sorry, Justin. Yeah, what? Fill, fill the hole. No, keep, keep talking. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. I'm sorry, Doug. I'm sorry. Doug. I looked at Justin yes, when I should have. I know. I was like, <laughs> should have really? looked at him. That wasn't even that good a one. <laughs> He made face, no. dude. But I mean, it, you know, at least come. I mean, that was like. Uh, remember when Jim Carrey came out said the same thing too. Jim Carrey came out and said, yeah. you know, like, I wish everybody could experience what it's like to be rich and famous and so like that, just so they could see that it's like it's not as what it's cracked up to be. You know, no. mm -hmm. so you you want it so bad, and then you get it, and then you realize like, oh man, and then you see all the other the other sides to it. But I thought that was crazy that he came out and said that just because he is. He's kind of mm -hmm. like the poster boy he's like for, Ooh, what weird meaningful relationships like you, you actually have better sex yeah you know? and like it's you're more actually fulfilling. more connected yeah. uh, to that person and, and you want to be around them and yeah. it's like oh weird yeah it's uh, i mean obviously it's like old wisdom i don't yeah. know i think we discard old wisdom because it's old um and we think we maybe know better you know it's funny well i i also think okay i don't think it's just that too i think that we're also we're, we're also driven by novelty and so and, there's in and, and hedonism Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. So, you know, that's, you know, a, a different chick, a different boat, a different car every day yeah. sounds very novel and exciting. And then I think you do that a thousand times, you know, or whatever. And you realize that like, oh, wow, it's like as, as novel and as cool as novelty is, there's something else that's, that's deeper. Way better. better. Yeah. I was re in fact, I was on, uh, I read this article and it was <clears> like, uh, the new, the, you know, the new trend in relationships. I like that. How it said new about polyamory. <laughs> Okay. Now, first off, that's not new. That's old. Yeah. That's that was tried for a long time in lots of different societies. We all figured out it actually works out better if we try to be monogamous. But it was so funny reading the comments of people. It's like, yeah, you know, it's great. We have this relationship, whatever. And it's where it's like, you know, let's see where this ends for you. You know, where this is going to end up. Because yeah. you're in your 20s now. You think it's a good time or whatever. But it, I mean, the data on dating apps shows when people are doing that, what ends up happening is you get. 10% of the guys attract 90% of the girls. All the other guys are kind of left behind. And those 10% of the guys get bloated egos and then the women get hurt. And it's just, it's a mess. I, that's been, that was the best explanation for why we moved away from uh, like open relationships, yeah. right? That like if we evolved where you, or every, polygamy, the violence went through the roof. Yeah. I mean, it makes so much sense, right? That the, you know, handful of really strong, attractive, you know, men, lots of resources, yeah, got, yeah, yeah, got all else, the women. Yeah. And then, you know, sure that for those guys, it was good for a while. But then after a while, when that, when they represent only 10% and then 90% of the guys are getting no women, like, yeah, see what kind so of. So I listened to this, this woman who she's, I can't remember her name. In fact, I'm gonna try and get her on the show. So now I wish I remember her name. But she's uh, she's a she's a I believe a scientist. She studies human behavior, and she said the way that I this this gentleman asked her, "What do you think about open relationships?" And she said the way that I judge a behavior, or one of the best ways to judge a behavior, is to see how it affects the most vulnerable in our society, children. So anytime we're doing something new, hmm. if we're trying to decide. Is this a yeah. good or a bad thing? That should always be our gauge. Yes. Like, is it better for yeah. children or worse for children? Right. And she said, when we're talking about open relationships, polyamory, is it better or worse for children? Mm -hmm. And the, and it's, it's worse. It's worse for children. Children yeah. not knowing who dad is or people, you know, they don't have that same connection uh, or mom it, is not paying attention 100% or that entirely focused on raising the children. And that's what the data shows. What an interesting lens. Think about any behavior. I, I know. Apply I, it there. I was just, I was just trying to kind of rack my like. Where is that not true? Like, was there, where is there an example where we've, where we've done something where it's like, if we would have just looked through that lens, it would have been a much easier answer. Totally. I, mean, I thought that was the conversation so brilliant. we started on is a good example of that. Yeah, you I know? thought that was so brilliant. It's like, is that it's probably like, a healthy thing for the kids to see or try and figure out? And totally. Understand, or is it probably not very healthy? Like. That's actually a really interesting lens. To yeah, look that was through. a stronger lens a few years back, you know? It yeah. It seems like it's changed for sure. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, a study came out in fasting that annoyed the hell out of me. So I'll go over it oh, with God, you guys. It's flying all over the place because the title uh, or the, the study itself um, says that, and I'll read it to you. It says, and this is what I hate about studying. 
about studies sometimes, or yes, I hate this about studies or media. Here's the title. Eight hour time restricted eating, intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. is linked to a 91% higher risk of cardiovascular health or death. So eight, what they found in this study what? was that by eating in an eight hour time window. <laughs> is that because they went around all the rest homes where people don't eat any food? <laughs> so here's what they did. They studied 20,000 the yeah. <laughs> 20, adults. Okay. And they said those who fought, they found that those who ate within an eight hour time restricted eating schedule. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They had a much higher rate of cardiovascular disease than those who ate throughout the day, like normal people. That was the control. The control was these people eat from 4 p.m. to, you know, from, you know, 8 p.m. to this time. That's it. Or not whatever. what they choose to eat. Not no. What, anything else. Now, what do you guys know? You go out in the average population yeah, yeah. and you find a bunch of people that only eat. Yeah, they skip, uh, they like skip, they skip breakfast, they skip breakfast noon. and then they go yeah. through a drive through for lunch or something like yeah, that. Like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, if you take a, a bunch of people from the street and you, and you find <laughs> a bunch of people. calories. That, just yes. That start eating at 6 p.m. and stop eating at midnight or start eating at noon and stop eating at right. What you're going to find is a bunch of unhealthy eating. Yeah. That's typically what happens. There were no controls on what they ate, if they exercised, what they valued. It was just, we knew that, look, as gym owners and, and trainers, I knew that unless somebody was practicing fasting because they were health conscious, you know, and if people skip meals, typically it's unhealthy, there's unhealthy habits around it. Who funds a study like that? Like, what's the desired outcome on something like that? Like, what, what, what do you... What are you yeah. about to prove or disprove or what? Like, it doesn't even make sense why you would put even any money in the direction to 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 do that. You know, it was an it was it was uh, a study from I believe it was the American Heart Association. But mm. I mean, it's it's crazy because they don't. So here, I'll read what the analysis found: people who followed a pattern of eating all of their food across less than eight hours a day had a 91% higher risk of death due to cardiovascular disease. Well, there's also this part, Sal, which is is my biggest knock on like intermittent fasting is it's really hard to get all the nutrients you need. So you're also you're also getting that with those people. So you're getting people that are probably lacking in nutrients and or making bad food choices. This is people who don't eat all day and then binge eat and make yeah. bad yeah, food it's choices. binge eating. Period. It's, End it's, of story. It's, it's promoting that. If that's yeah. the only thing you're controlling for, that's what you're going to find. If you control for what they eat, then what you'll find are very or small yeah I don't know the motivation what to put a black eye on the movement of intermittent yeah, fasting I, I so. I, like I don't know like what yeah the because the controls in what you've described it's like it just opens that up for like it, yeah. it to just be unhealthy people like binge eating yeah. don't don't most most studies that we do they ha there's like a, a a purpose behind it right I mean you're gonna go spend tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars to put together a study. You normally are selling a product or you're normally trying to prove something, right? I mean, how often do we do studies on, on, on a whim or just because, oh, let's go, yeah. let's go uh, put a black eye on intermittent fasting. I don't, I don't know. I think maybe because it's a, it was, it's a popular trend and people talk mm. about it. And mm. so the American Heart Association said, let's do Which, this analysis. Haven't they been under scrutiny? Um, I don't know if there was like uh, connections there with like the sugar funding or not. But oh, uh, there's I think, been I'm stuff like I'm pretty sure that. there's been some crossover. Well, there. Well, nonetheless, it's just a bad. It's just it just doesn't mean anything. If I see something like that, I know how people behave when it comes to diet. And if you take the average person that's not health conscious, not trying to make better choices, and you tell me, oh, this person eats one or two meals a day, I'm going to tell you right now they don't eat healthy. That's what typically happens with the average person. Mm -hmm. Now, if you tell me, oh, I know I have a friend of mine, they intermittent fast because they're they they believe in fasting's health benefits and they work out, whatever, they probably make good food choices. Right. So it's not the the the, the whole time window thing. If anything, what you did is you just self-selected for people who 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 restrict and binge, yeah. who don't plan if their you're diet. Eating whole foods and you're trying yeah. to make, you know, good decisions within those parameters, and that's like the focused goal yeah. of it. It's a different situation. Mm -hmm. So did we um, did we announce to the audience? I know I did on my Instagram story, but I don't know if I I know I talked that we were going to. I just wanted to tell the audience that I got the trisepatide. Is that how I said trisepatide? Trisepatide. I got you just the started it. I started it yesterday. Yes. I'm gonna, I'm, you know, so that's the GLP I'm going one. to reserve my opinion on it, or uh, even though I feel like I already yeah. noticed some things early on. It's like literally day. This is. The first 24 So hours. the most popular one is semaglutide. Terzepatide is a next generation one that seems to be more effective. That's mm -hmm. the one that, but they're both GLP-1s. So mm -hmm. semaglutide, terzepatide, brand names 
Ozempic, Wegovi. Yeah. Uh, I think Trizepatide brand name is Monaro, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, but you just start once a week uh, sub Q injection. Yep. And yeah, you said you already noticed. I yesterday. did, but I don't want to talk too much about it because you know I me, mean? I'm super skeptical about stuff like that, and I need to see some patterns first. Mm -hmm. But um, I did. I did notice the very first night when I would normally have a, a craving that I didn't. And so it'll be interesting to see. It was an out of the ordinary hmm. feeling. Yes. Yes. So again. Any change uh, in sleep? Too early to tell. It's one night. Yeah. You know that's true. I had great sleep last night, but that's I mean, uh, that's why too, like I'm, I want to tell the audience it's, I'm, I'm starting it. Literally. This is like the first yeah. full day has gone by. If that craving thing trends in that direction. That'll be real interesting. Well, it'll I, be for sure. Cause that's super consistent with yes. you. Yes. And I, and in like, I was, Katrina was asking me like how, like, um, like, well, how can you tell It's like this? I said, well, I said yesterday was there we, some consistent behaviors that I've done a, a thousand, tens of thousands of times that I can, I recognize. And I said, you know, we went for a walk. So I created extra activity that I normally would. I ate, uh, you know, a protein bar and then a pokey bowl for lunch, which is a lean lunch for me. Then I had a lean dinner Then I trained on top of that. I said, and then I also even smoked weed early. And I know when I, when all those things line up like that, I know what kind of night ends up happening. Ice cream. Yes. Like, <laughs> or, I'm, or even crushing a big old bowl of magic spoon to, to yeah. subdue that a little bit. Right. Like I know how I feel the urge I have, uh, to want to eat like that. And I said, I didn't have that uh, last night at all. So that's really interesting to me. So we'll see if more of these days like that happen where I feel that way and it'll be, and I have, and I actually intentionally have left some stuff at my house so that it's easy accessible. So I'm actually making it more difficult. You're tempt for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of like trying to really set myself up for success, I'm not, I'm not like, Oh, let's make sure there's nothing in the house. I can't get like, there's ice cream in the freezer. There's candy treats in the house. Like there's things that I know that if that urge is coming mm -hmm. on it, like I don't have a barrier in front of me, it could be really easy for me to do it. Cause I kind of wanted to do that. I kind of wanted to put it like, in a situation where, and then even going to allow myself, if I really want to go do it, like, cause what everyone has told me is that you still will want those things, but then you'll like have a bite and you'll be satisfied. So I have a few clients and friends that have taken I it. I have and, friends that are saying And, the, and that what they say to me is like, oh yeah, it's not like you won't like ice cream ever again. It's like, but what you'll see is if you would know, know yourself as like an ice cream binger, which is I am, I'm the type of guy who could eat like a tub in one mm. sitting, right? So if I can just go have like a bite you of it, just and, wolf it down real quick. Yeah. Right. Can I go just have a couple bites of it and feel satisfied? And I'm more interested it? in, cause that I think is pretty well established. Um, uh, I mean, it's very well established. It does that. I'm interested in the other potential effects. I want to see if you notice any changes in mood, any antidepressive mm. effects, if you're any effects nicer on to sleep. us. <laughs> he seems like he's in a better mood today. Right? Yeah. Who knows? I'm, right? I'm noticing. Yeah, that's I mean, it could be yeah, a little. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see uh, no, I want to know. I want to know. I want to see if you notice any changes in other habits that maybe you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm paying attention to everything, right? So uh, I'm gonna I'll I'll keep everybody posted as I go through it. I'll be tracking. By the way, stuff. Adam, you go goes to our partners at mphormones.com. So anybody who don't go right. online and go, you know, with a non doctor. Dude prescription I, i've been meaning to bring this up. i saw a video and i don't know how uh like wide span this is or not but like in china they have um so you've heard of like you know with russia and china they've had influence in terms of like being able to get you a bunch of commenters or like yeah. real, real oh, right. you know spammers yeah, and all yeah. that kind of the, stuff in your comments well uh they uh, there's this video that was like showing a factory and and then out in the streets, even with like those ring lights and everything with somebody in front um, talking to camera and doing their whole thing and spiel. And literally it was like this sea of influencers that they're all like grooming to, to be like, you know, to these, promote something or to, to promote, like oh, just, wow. just to just farming influencers all like together in like one wow. area and like coaching them all. And it was like hundreds of them. Like what? it was, it, it was like, it, it freaked me it out. Like a, black, like a black mirror episode. Yeah. Right I was there. like, this is horrific. Like, ah, well, you know, you think about it with cheap in countries with cheap human labor. I mean, it's very, I guess you could pay thousands of people to create something to, to push something to make yeah. it kind of viral. Yeah. Or give, well, comment. give them a persona, give them a script, you know, and just have them just throw them out there and wow. see what, you know. Well, I know that's one get. of the things that like uh, the, the Facebook and Instagram they're and TikTok, they're all trying to figure out like how to um, 
to figure out when the when people are using farming, uh, what do they call them? Cell phone farms or whatever. Mm, I don't know if they, oh, what yeah. they're called. Uh -huh. Because that feeds into the algorithm. You know, part of what gets like one of our YouTube videos populated is that it takes off at a faster rate, oh, right? Yeah. If more people are viewing it, more people are liking it, more people are commenting on it, well, then, then YouTube will then, the algorithm automatically promotes mm. it to more people and then it's this compounding effect. So these, obviously these farms feed into that. So you could have me and you then your algorithms all off. and then i have a farm of ten thousand you know, fake viewers but the the algorithm doesn't know that they're fake they're they all have their do you think adam because you you're the guy that you 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 know you're the the savant uh when it comes to this oh, do wow, you think nice. you're welcome do you think you were nice to me earlier so. <laughs> no, no that, that's it's true so it's getting weird do now. you think the reason why <laughs> hey listen go on I go on go on go on i'm gonna, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna step out i won't I, I won't get in between i'm a little jealous with the relationship you and doug have so I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> lately you guys have been hanging he's out, out. Hey, we were about to, to have an intervention he's, he's trying to win me over that's what no, this no. Is. <laughs> just and i over like, here. why don't i have what he has we're like what's going on with those two no no, no. so do you think the reason why uh, full disclosure uh we we do so well one of the reasons why we do so well with our sponsors in terms of conversions is because every listener every view we have is real and a lot of these other companies 100 have fake you think so 100 100 percent uh because because they'll have a you know a half and, a million followers but and i've talked i've talked to a lot of our, i've talked to a lot of our partners yep. ab about this because they're they're always like baffled by man you know we advertise with this person and that person and they got millions of followers here they got millions of this and that and it's wild that you guys convert so much higher. There's obviously multiple things happening there. We have a strong relationship with our audience that we've built through authenticity and, and years of truly slowly building this thing. And then they're all real. Uh, it's as small as it may seem where we only have a few hundred thousand people on Instagram and, you know, you know, what are we doing? Seven to 10 million downloads a month on the podcast or whatever, but they're real. It's like they're all. And so those numbers even though it doesn't, it doesn't even you know come close to a Joe Rogan type of download. I think so many other businesses and people have so many fake bots and things that are attached to them, and you see it. You see it on their social platforms when you they get. You don't see that a lot on ours. You don't see a lot of bots yeah. commenting. Every once in a while, you see like we'll That's get. It's so weird. Yeah, it's yeah. weird because the so it the, definitely sticks out. It's also weird because the incentives for the social media companies are a bit opposite, right? Because if you have people with 10 million followers, but you're Instagram, you know, like they only have 2 million followers. You you, you want to fix it, but you don't because if you crack down, everybody's yeah. followers can affect, affect your stuff. I think yeah. it even matters too because um, we've 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 experimented with this too, right? Where we've done paid paid traffic and paid advertising versus just allowing all the organic work that we've done. Yeah. Um, and those leads are just terrible, right? So you, the audience probably doesn't know this, but you know, we we spent a lot of money last year on uh, trying out, um, you know, ad reads uh, that you, you hire a company and they basically, you know, for a certain amount of money, we paid for 2 million impressions, right? So 2 million people will have heard the name Mind Pump through all these other random podcasts. But because it is a forced ad like that to a random stranger, even if we got out of the 2 million impressions, a thousand new people that come over, those thousand people are a different customer than the customer who watched Sal give a really good talk on another podcast and like fell in love with what you had to say and then bought your book sure. and then came over to our podcast and now listens to all of our content. Like that one, that one person right there is valued at like a hundred of those thousand paid people to come over. Uh, those are all just made up sure, numbers, sure, sure. but you get my point, mm -hmm. right? It's like, so there's that part too. And a lot of people pay to you know, to pay to get their reach out there more, even if it's not fake farms, even if they're real people, they're still paid strangers to come into their business or come into their ecosystem, and it's not the same as organic and word of mouth. Yeah, Nothing I, is more powerful than, of course, somebody who said you got to listen to these and you guys. Trust them, you know them. Yes, of course, yeah, and they know you. Right. They'll know what you like. I mean, it's 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 some of the advice I always give to other um, fitness influencers or people that are trying to build something similar to what we did is that you know don't get caught up in the you know, caring so much about the number of followers the or the number that everybody numbers. else is. Yeah. Are these, in, in, these in, like famous people on Instagram? I'm like, you're far better off impacting lives and helping a handful of people and really going above them. Cause those five people are going to go tell 10 other people. And when they tell those 10 other people, it's so different 
than them hearing an ad about you totally. or seeing a billboard totally. about you. Speaking of which, is our is our three yeah. day thing is that live or can I talk about that? Is that Ooh. live, Doug? Oh, we Doug would know I, that. I, I don't know. know that. Uh, can, can, yeah, I think it is. It's going to be in Las Vegas. Is that what you want to talk about? No, no, no. no, 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 no. I'm talking the, about the three day the training. The three day training oh, I gave for Steve. trainers. I it's not. I don't have a URL for that. Okay, hey, it's all right. We got we got it coming. We have a three day course training course that I taught. For trainers and coaches, it's free. It's coming up. We'll be able to release it, and anybody can watch it. Yeah, we'll put it on the story. So that too. what did you think of um, uh, Brain FM? Oh, so here's the deal. I was just gonna say, what's interesting is so Brain FM. People don't know this is a company that makes music, and in that music, there's technology where there are sounds that induce certain states of mind, and it's it's proven with fMRIs and blood flow. So literally, you listen to focus music. Your brain within five minutes goes into this focus, yeah, flow uh, state. Flow state, you know, where you're looking at the the theta, the delta waves of the brain, and, and all the waves. I don't know them all, but it's a focus state of mind or sleep or whatever. We've been working with them. We've been using them, I should say, forever. I use them every time we travel. It works like a charm. What I found was interesting is he came on, and he's like, "You guys were the first company we're working with. You gave us that initial first bump. Now that we're going to start advertising, because they've grown grassroots." Now that we're going to start advertising again, they came back to us. I First know. people. Yeah. Uh -huh. So nice. Full I mean, interesting to, you know, add that to this conversation. I mean, that's a perfect example right that's there. That's exactly a, what I was going to say. Of a company that grew 100% organic. I mean, he said since the last time we spoke that I've had over 4 million users yeah. use it. And that's without any sort of advertising. No. That's just purely people just using it, being blown away. Say, yeah. And then telling somebody else about and it. And they give you free. So, and he's smart. Of course they do this. You go on there. You, you, can, you can try some out for free. See for yourself. It's really weird. It's strangely effective. It's one of the most consistent. I, mean, I things can't that stress I enough to people to go tr just try it. It's free. Yeah. Go try it and use it, and it's every bit worth. Legitimately this works. App. We've used it for years now. I, mean, I can show you on my phone. It's one it of the most consistent that we use it for. We use it for Max for sleep. We use it when we travel. We use mm -hmm. it when we're focusing. I've talked about using it in sex. There's all kinds of great ways to use it. So <laughs> great ways. Yeah, it's incredible. So got to go you check. Go check it, it out. Uh, for, yeah, <laughs> check it out. Uh, I do have a shout out. I'll go ahead and throw this out there real quick. So I was uh, going down the YouTube rabbit hole and uh i watch guitarists and i watch you know a lot of music videos and whatnot and i had no idea this guy existed like so some of the greats uh out there like i mean steve vai is one of those kind of virtuoso guys that does like a lot of electric guitar that's like really crazy and he promoted this guy and like i had never heard of him uh and he's from uh italy mm. from uh sicily uh specifically but i don't um, know him yeah, you Just probably do. He's probably wondering. probably family. So <laughs> my cousin. I mean, you always bring it up. So yeah. I figured you know him. Yeah. Uh, but uh, his name's Matteo Mancusco, and he's his dad was like a classical guitarist. And so what's unique about him, and I literally think he's like one of the best guitarists of our time. Like he's, wow. Wow. he's a kid. And what do you mean? How old is he? Well, I mean, twenties. Okay, yeah. but well, he's uh, a kid to us. To, to us, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, old, we're old dogs. <laughs> but he he plays like finger pick. Is he, he's not the guy who does he all like the crazy finger pick. No, no, no. So all that is like. There's a lot of guitarists out there that are really good that do like the crazy slap. And yeah, yeah, stuff. okay. So. Yeah, no, he's like. Uh, it, it's hard to describe, but like you could tell, he's very, very much. Uh, like in tune with with actual music theory and and he knows like uh, uh so a lot of the style of the classical guitar he he converted over to electric guitar oh. uh for a lot of like the lead solo stuff and blues and all that but so he plays with like just his fingers do all the like some picking moves uh and sweeps and all this crazy stuff but it's like seamless it, it sounds very fluid and it's it's very uh, very cool to watch. Go check him it's out. It's Matteo Mancuso. Mancuso. Uh, dot guitar. So Matteo Mancuso dot guitar. That's where you can find him on Instagram. Do you like grass fed meat? Do you like heritage pork? Uh, do you like uh, sustainably raised chicken or uh, wild caught fish? Check it out. There's a company called Butcher Box that delivers it to your door. And the best part is the prices are incredible. So if you want to be healthy, if you like your protein, you got to check out ButcherBox. We've been with them for a very, very long time. And right now, if you go through our link, butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, you will get your choice of either two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips included in your box for free for a year. All you got to do is use the code mind pump. By the way, you also get $20 off your first box. 
All right, back to the show. First question is from Fulvio Castle. What can I do to get bigger if I'm only noticing strength gains? Okay, so first, first off, if you see strength gains Eat food. and you continue to see strength gains. It's like thunder and lightning. Yeah. Wow, like that, that was a great one. Like yes. That? You like that? Yes. Relax. Eventually. It's coming. It's yeah, coming. Eventually, the muscle gains come. And yeah. I I mean, I don't see this anymore at, at my age, not as long as I've trained, but I remember my early days especially, it, it would look like this. I'd go, I'd get stronger, get stronger, get stronger, get stronger. And then boom, three pounds of muscle out of nowhere, it would feel like. Mm -hmm. And then stronger, 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 boom. Kuchiga. So it, it it typically, the the muscle gains typically come in spurts, whereas the strength gains can be more of a, sometimes like a consistent thing. Now, that being said, uh, diet would make this sure. happen faster. Yeah, more it, calories. It, yeah, yes. it could it, it could also mean that too, right? It could also mean that I just always caution people to be careful of that because I mean, uh, a lot of times when you like when, you if just you, push the calories. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. Uh, like myself, I was so insecure about being smaller and I wanted to be bigger that I you know I didn't I wasn't reading the signals of I was getting stronger. All I cared about was getting bigger, so I was forcing the calories and then you put on a bunch of body fat that you didn't mm, need to. Yes. So. You know, as long as you're you're hitting your protein intake and you're in a slight calorie surplus, the size will come. And and honestly, you don't want it to come on too fast because if it comes on really fast, then you know for sure. Uh, yeah, muscle good, doesn't. You don't gain tons of muscle right yeah, away. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. I it mean, takes a, a little while. Five pounds of muscle, which is a lot, distributed across your entire body. Uh, doesn't look like like you know two inches to your biceps and three inches no. to your quads. Like it takes time to do if that. If you gain five pounds of lean muscle mass, actual muscle mass in thirty days, you're crushing. You're absolutely murdering it. I mean, stretch that out in in a six month period, you put on thirty pounds of, of muscle mass. So get stronger, and over time the muscle will come on. And now you can get stronger just through neural adaptation, but this. A lot of this happens in the beginning, right? Where you mm -hmm. first start working out and it's not necessarily that your muscles, you've increased the amount of contractile tissue, but rather your central nervous system is firing right. more effectively and efficiently. And so those initial strength gains come on quickly, but those also, I mean that you get the CNS to fire more efficiently and that will lead to more contractile tissue as well. So you just got to be patient uh, with something like this. I have, I've yet to see somebody consistently get stronger yeah. over long periods of time without it's on adding its way. Yeah. Totally. Next question is from Haley Valine. Can you please provide some tips for a skinny fat body? I'm already lifting four to five times a week, eat my body weight and protein daily and get 10 to 15,000 steps a day. I don't know why I can't get more toned and muscular. So first off, I don't know, Doug, if you could pull up this person's Instagram so we could look and see what they look like because uh, sometimes, uh, I'll say all, oftentimes, Somebody describes himself and it's a I bit know. distorted. I know. Okay. So I want to look at that first. Now, number two, typically, if this is somebody that's doing all these things, um, I'd want to look at the workout. And if there's a problem, it tends to be the workout and it tends to be that it's too much, too much intensity, too much volume. And so it looks like you're doing all the right things, but you're just doing more than your body can adapt from. And so you end up not getting stronger, not building muscle. And then lastly, I would add, how long have you been doing this too? Because there's also people that have these unrealistic expectations of, I've been doing this, I do it already, and it's been like it's three been, months. Yes. Three months of their life. And it's yeah. just like, you've already made really good gains in three months. Like, yes. what are you expecting to happen in X, you know, the period? Have you of time? been lifting the same weights this whole time too and kind of doing okay. the routine, or have you been challenging yourself to gain and increase? Is she, is she trying to lean out? That, she said she's skinny fat. You're not skinny fat. No, 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 no you're not. You're not skinny fat. No, no. no. Yeah, it's a bit of a distorted view uh, of their self. But yeah. I, look, I tell you what, uh, along those lines, very few people can work out with strength, can strength train with the appropriate intensity uh, five days a week consistently and, and it be the appropriate amount of training. Oftentimes that's too much. Yeah, I, I, definitely this person, okay, looking at looking at her, I know, and we are totally guessing based off where I'm going to go off of programming though. Totally. Like I, I think if you're hitting your protein intake- If she followed MAPS Anabolic yes. with that, then she would see the muscle. Yeah. If you're hitting your protein intake and you're, and by the way, you don't, you, she doesn't need to be in a deficit. She's no. plenty lean enough. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I could see where you could want to add muscle to your physique and your body. And that's MAPS anabolic would be the training. With the same protein that you're eating. Yeah. You can still keep up the steps. No yep. problem. Yep. And what'll happen is, so if this, if this person hired me, I would 
keep everything the same, but I'd take their workout, do three days a week, full body maps anabolic, and they would be blown away. Yeah, yeah. Maps anabolic. I, I wonder what the programming looks like. That's, totally. I, I wonder if she's doing like a, you know, circuit based type of type of. Or deal. if it's just too much volume, yeah. too much yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's typically what it is. Get on maps anabolic. Next question is from Ewalina Licka. Is it possible to lose muscle due to overtraining, even if you always hit your protein targets? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you guys have, have you guys ever lost muscle because you worked out too much? Yes. I know I have. Yes, <laughs> it's a terrible, 100%. terrible realization. Yeah. In fact, one of the fastest ways to get your body to lose muscle, besides laying in bed and not eating, is to beat the shit out of yourself in the gym above and beyond what you can adapt to and, and recover from. Your body looks at that extreme stress. And one, what it tries to do is it tries to reduce its energy requirements. So it reduces muscle because it looks at it as this tremendous stress. And when your body's very stressed, it wants to survive off less calories. One of the best ways to do that is to, is to, is to pare muscle down. Overtraining is a very consistent uh, way to get your body to lose muscle. And at first what happens is you just you lose strength yeah. and you get super stiff and sore and then it's like, oh my God, I'm hammering myself in the gym. What's going on? I don't look yeah, as full. Muscle, muscle, is muscle is an expensive tissue. And if you're not giving it adequate nutrients to sustain and just, and adequate nutrients doesn't mean just protein. Like if you also, are, that's true. You know, you, you, if you're, if you're under calorie, right. So you're, you're not giving your body enough fuel to fuel all these workouts and you're just hitting protein intake and you're hammering the, the muscle four or five times a week. Like it, absolutely. You could lose muscle. It's going to pare it down because it's saying I'm not getting enough. I'm not getting enough to support what we're doing training wise. And I'm also not recovering enough mm -hmm. for what I'm doing. And so, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll pare down. For Do you guys sure. remember when this, I know this has happened to you guys, but I remember the first time it happened. I didn't take time off working out ever as a kid. I definitely was overtraining and I don't remember why. Oh, we traveled, we went somewhere and I was going to go, it was a gym was that I was going to work out at was closed and I didn't have access to a car. I was a kid. So I couldn't go anywhere. So I took a week off yeah. and I remember I came back home <laughs> stronger and stronger. Yep. You guys, did you, yeah, that's happened happened oh, yeah. for you. Yeah. Well, tell me now, did you guys get the, the, the lesson there right away or did you, cause I no, remember being no, like, I had to learn that lesson like five no, times. No, <laughs> yeah. No. I learned that lesson five register. different times, five different ways. And, and yeah. it's, it's a, a consistent reminder too, by the way, like I still think we teeter in this of, yeah. You know, when you when you are a fitness fanatic or you're a person who enjoys working out, you tend to teeter in this position a it's lot. It's not what you can tolerate. Yeah. You know, it's like you're not supposed to work out to the point where it's like, oh, my God, I barely made it through that, you know, to the point where you're just going to end up repairing the damage of what happened. And then either you're going to stay the same or you're going to start a downward trend. What, one of the hardest things to uh, transition to that uh, that has continued to get better for me or I've had to try and refine over all these years of lifting is how little I actually need to stimulate growth or maintain my muscle. It's, it's way less than I always yeah. think it is. I'm always wrong. I always think I need to do all this to, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of that is just cause I like, I love the feel of the pump and I yes. like yeah. moving heavy weight. Yeah. It's like, it's more of the, it's just the workout. Itself. Yeah. It's, it's more of the addiction to the workout than it really is like, okay, like if my goal was, I just kind of want to keep this look or have this much muscle or be able to do this. Like how much do I really need to do to sustain that? You'd be so surprised. <laughs> How minimal you there's have data to data on it now. Yeah. There's, there's lots of studies on this. I mean, there was that one study we talked about where they took two groups and one group took a week off every, after three weeks of training, they would always take a week off. The other group worked out consistently. Guess what? They built the same amount of muscle at the end of the 16 week study. In other words, one group worked out 25% less, same amount of muscle. There's also data to show how little the average person needs to work out to not lose muscle as they age. It's like once every 14 days or something ridiculous. Like you don't need nearly as much as you think. And and if you're really consistent with your workouts, you're more likely to be doing more than you need than, than the it's right such amount. a it's such a hard thing as a as a trainer to communicate to because it's like we we tend to toggle between the two extremes. Yeah. Either you don't do anything, right? And it's like and or you so, do too much. Right. And so you're like, you, you don't want to communicate to people like, oh, you don't need to do that much. Do less. Cause it's like that person doesn't need to hear that because they they're they never do anything. <laughs> you know? So it's like <laughs> you don't want to say that. And then you have the other side of people that are like trying everything and doing everything and five to seven days a week. And it's like 
it's like we always as humans we're so funny how we we tend to go one extreme or the other and the the sweet spot is really not it's really not that hard especially if you have good balance with eating you don't eat like an asshole you hit your protein intake you're consistent with eating yes. whole foods the amount of stimulus that you need in the gym to build an incredible physique is not nearly so, as much as we have been promoting. And I'm so glad you said to build an incredible physique because there are benefits to consistent daily activity. But when it comes to building and sculpting your body, you don't need to do all that. Now, is there are there additional health benefits to just moving every day, going outside every day, doing things like mobility? Yes. But what people do is they take the, I'm going to build muscle or build more muscle or build a better physique by beating myself up all the time. That's not the case. So you could be active every day, <coughs> but the intense workouts, you don't need much of those to make it happen. Next question is from the Healthy Hair Creative. What are the best exercises to do to strengthen your wrists? You know, Sal one of my- Sal knows all about this. Say what? <laughs> Sal knows all. I was going to jab Doug. He, he went after Sal. <laughs> <laughs> what is- <laughs> what was that wrist? <laughs> uh, you know, he's casting, you know, <laughs> uh, fishing. Yeah. What? what would you think? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's, <laughs> That's not what I was thinking. That's not I was thinking either. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna name an exercise that I think is one of the most underutilized uh, yet valuable exercises that you know bodybuilders do these all the time. I don't see anybody doing this anymore, and that's a, a an old fashioned reverse, yeah, curl. reverse curl. A reverse curl, you could use an easy curl bar if Ugh, if your wrist, if it doesn't feel good on your wrist, a straight bar is fine too. Um, but it is such the, when you look at all the exercises that we do in the gym for our body, the traditional ones, all of them tend to strengthen the wrist in the flexion type position, this kind of wrist curl position. So mm -hmm. rows and you know, back exercise, it's all this here. Very few strengthen the wrist mm -hmm. in this kind of extension, right? This back position. And a reverse curl does that exceptionally well. And to the point where if you practice these, your wrist extenders can be almost as strong as your flexors. I mean, you can get really, really strong. And you'll see a lot of wrist problems get solved. I always want to – so if this was a client, like I'd want to dig deeper in like what – Like where, like why are they saying Yeah, this? where is this question coming from? Because a lot of times people that have, quote, unquote, weak wrist too, lack – mobility in them and yeah. so risk cars yep. and doing things to to gain mobility will which is will also by the way gain strength right like mm -hmm. so a lot of times when people have carpal tunnel or they have like tennis elbow or they got these issues that that they're getting pain from and then they've been told oh you have weak wrist okay yeah strengthening will help but also working on your mobility in your wrist would really help prevent a lot of those issues. So when I would get a client that would say something like this, I would normally go, "Well, why are you wanting yeah. to stre strengthen your wrist? What do you? What do you? Well, who well, told you that? Or what's going on?" And also just little things like when you're pressing, whether it's bench pressing or overhead pressing, and then you know your <laughs> the your broken wrist, wrist. Or broken wrist now, and you're just reinforcing that and putting even more stress on that. When in fact you need to make a tight fist and and i and so sometimes i'll take like clients in that situation too and we'll work on like um uh fist like push-ups and we'll go yeah. on top of the knuckles and, and try and reinforce that obviously you know gradually uh, you know maybe elevated or on the knees or, or whatever holding, dumbbells holding or something a dumbbell like or something but really like reinforcing that like grip like fist position yeah, yeah. well the person's name uh the healthy hair creative yeah i wonder you're if a they hairstylist do. oh yes. yeah see and i bet yeah. you so i've worked with a lot i've not yes. a lot but i've worked with pe people who do hair for a living and they do have wrist issues often, yeah. often shoulder and wrist and a issues. lot of times it's because of lack of mobility that's right mm -hmm. so uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna take a shot in the dark and say that's probably what it is and what <laughs> you'll really benefit from is prime pro yep. in prime pro we have a whole section yeah. dedicated to your wrist and before, I mean, and those exercises would be ideal for you to do it before work. I'm, we're going to take a shot in the dark and say you're a hairstylist. That's what I'm going to guess. Is it? Is it? Is that, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're you're suffering from pain. Yep. and Overuse. And I knew fatigue. it. I knew it. it's such a you know like very few people are like I need to strengthen my wrist. What do I yeah, do? Yeah, you know yeah, say yeah. it's like well, the, the you need to do uh, wrist cars and wrist mobility stuff. Yeah. It's in our Prime Pro program. Yep. It was designed for someone like you. And do it every day if you can. For sure, do it every day well, before do, you go to do, work. Do, you start slow and then work up. But I think you're 100% right, Adam, because th with this profession, doing strength training for the wrist, it'll help if you do it appropriately. But mobility is where the answer is That's right. for this person. So look, if you love the show, check out our free fat loss guide. It's free. It's at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us on Instagram, Justin. 
is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Stefano and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Always remember, life is magic, love is the wand. Thank you.